participatory ethnobotany. We extend a joyful welcome to you, ma'am. You may now start your session, ma'am. Uh, hello, I would like to thank Dr. Ryan and the researcher of our center, Margar Margaret Mota, for inviting me to give this lecture today. It's a great honor for me to be in touch with you in this meeting and learning with the experiences of the other lectures. The title of my lecture is Brazilian Traditional Medicine, Some Examples of Prevention, Diagnosis and Treatment. I am Eliana Rodriguez, the head of the Center for Ethnobotanical and Ethnopharmacological Studies at Federal University of São Paulo. Uh, here in Brazil, we have the popular medicines and the traditional medicines. The latter relates to the indigenous people since they have their own, own elements, practice and beliefs. While the popular medicines are those resulted from the mixing of elements belonging to many cultures, such as African, European, Asian, and so on, in addition to the, to the indigenous ones. Uh, in this lecture, we will present these traditional medicines. But why am I talking in the plural? Because of their cultural diversity in Brazil, we have 305 indigenous nations and 56 of them remain isolated until nowadays. In this slide, we can see different kinds of indigenous people living in Brazil. Uh, they differ in their hair, their, their graphics, clothes and so on. In the same way, they also have their own cosmology, so we have to consider each indigenous people in its peculiarity. Each one has its own medicinal elements, practices and beliefs. Considering the biological diversity in Brazil, uh, we have five main ecosystems and two of them are considered hot spots. They are considered regions with rich biodiversity and endemism, but they already lost 70% of their original area. So, since Brazil has an important biological and cultural diversity, the traditional knowledge arises naturally from these two potentials. In a recent review I have conducted, we realized that only 26 of the indigenous people had their traditional medicine recorded during academic studies. And these studies add up 358 plants with some possible action on the central nervous system. And less, of, uh, less half of them had any kind of study conducted from chem chemical or pharmacological point of view. As we can see, we still have a lot to do in this area of knowledge. Uh, also, many of the examples I will give during this lecture are about Krao people, since Dr. Carlini and I have developed an ethnopharmacological survey among them in the 90s. When we look at these plants, from this reveal that I am explaining, we observe that most of them may be analgesics, followed by plants used to the fever treatments and so on. Some of them possibly have psychoactive effects like anxiolytics, stimulants, hypnotics, hallucinogens, and they may act as um, just a moment, please. <laughs> and they may, may act as psycholeptic drugs or decrease the activity of the mind or psychoanalytic and increase the activity of the mind. And finally, as psychodysleptic and they disturb the activity of the mind. This is, would be a normal mind. Some plants are traditional that we show here, kava kava, coffee, cannabis, ayahuasca, zabumba, 
Some plant, plants are traditionally classified in one of the three categories, and they have or could have clinical uses in psychiatry. Many of these plants and fungus came, come, came actually from ethnopharmacological studies conducted among several cultures in the world along the history. These two books are references in this area. Uh, in Brazil, in our traditional medicines, indigenous medicines, the healing practitioners of these traditional medicines are called gene genetically as shaman, which are special pieces, people who has the power of act as a healer, but also as a sorcerer. But they have their own name depending on the indigenous people. So, for example, among the Bororo, they call Kunyan. Among the Krao people, they call themselves as Wayaka. Also, among Kayapo and Krao, they consider people, no, okay, okay, they consider two practitioners in their traditional medicines, the true shaman, shaman and the one who knows about medicine but does not have power to cure. To cure. Krao shaman, shamans are specialists uh, in one or more illnesses and receive guidance from a pahi, which is a spiritual guide. The initiation to become a shaman depends on the people. Some of them, for example, Bororo people, believe that the shaman are born with this power as a gift. Others, like Bakairi, think they receive orientation from the supernatural during courses when they decide to be a shaman. And Krao, for example, become shaman by the invitation of a spiritual guide. In all of these situations, the shamans explain that they have to go through food facing, social isolation, and use of psychodysleptic plants. But we wonder how do the, shame, the shamans acquire knowledge about the medicines? How? Um, first, we have to consider the, this knowledge as a dynamic activity. Every uh, day, they are searching for new medicines, new remedies. They study them, they test them with a very scientific approach, as levi used it to say. But this testing does not happen by chance. They follow some clues. One of them are methods that follow some theories which consider the analogy and the contrary between a plant's characteristic and the disease's characteristic. For example, the ghosts of the cassava leaf are very similar to the warts present in, that, in this hand. So, these leaves may be a medicine for the warts. Of course, it's not as simple as that, but it follows that logic, this logic. Other kind of method is the observation of the relation between animals and plants. For example, this plant is called Capran Corrireho, and its translation means turtle back plant, meaning leaf that slow you down. The Krao people started to test the use of this plant when they observed that the deer a very fast animal got slow when consuming the plant's leaf. The other method is by intuition. We consider intuition as the acquisition of knowledge or perception through the unconsciousness, without the appeal of sensations. It may happen during dreams and, and inspirations. Ayahuasca beverage may be a very important example of this. These medicines uh, bring many, many knowledge regarding treatment or regarding efficacy, but they also bring very important information, knowledge about restricted use of some of the plants or reg reg uh, regarding safety. For example, the Krao people explains that the tobacco of this plant named Jare is utilized topically for leg pain 
but if ingested, it can kill someone. And for the second plant, they explain that although this plant is utilized in, the med in their medicine, it's not recommended for the elderly since it's too strong. It's a too strong medicine. So it should be avoided and replaced by other plants in this case for the elderly. This knowledge shows that there are very important uh, cares about roots and restrict, restricted remedies considering different ages. Also, when the indigenous people name their plants, curious cases such as those on this slide are observed. The example of Capranco Hirejo was already seen on a previ previous slide, but this one, this water plant whose name means meat leaf, brings the idea of the passage ritual during which it's used. The boy's arms and legs are scarified during this ritual to increase muscle mass and make him a strong man, able of providing the family with food. Both examples bring pharmacological properties. So if someone looks at these popular names, it could be investigated they, these plants could be investigated for many biological effects. Also, when classifying their plants, Krao people divide them into two groups. The Vakmeye, which are plants that bloom or fruit in summer, and Katmeye, which are plants that bloom or fruit in winter. When they have to choose medicines, the shaman prefer the vacmeye uh, once, since the catamere remedies are diluted by the water since they bloom or fruit in the winter, which is during the rainy season. Also, we observe many preventive practices in, pra in the traditional medicines. For example, for three days before a ritual, Krao people drink three kinds of tea, of tea during the day as water to increase their body resistance and avoid sickness, since the rituals are physically exhausting. The tea is available in pots throughout the village for all the members of the community. So the diagnosis made by the shamans may happen using beverages, teas, smokes, mainly resulted from psychodysleptic plants, or the, we call the allucinogens. Also, the Kayapo and Krao distinguish between their own disease, they call me, ben, gon, kre, kane, and those brought by the white man, kuben, kane. And they explain that they do not have remedies, medicines, remedies for the, for the later, since they come from the no indigenous man. Snuffs can also be utilized in the diagnosis. For example, many species of Piptadenia, known as Yopo, can be utilized in snuffs, used in religious contexts to induce the shamans to train and to communicate with the spirits, resulting in prophecy or diagnosis. This is a snuff ritual. The treatment is peculiar to each indigenous people, but generally they, the healing ritual is divided into two parts. The first being at night, generally. During this time, the shaman removes magical objects from the patient's body or brings the soul of, di of dying patient back to his body. As we can see, sour paying sh shamans, for example, drink a tea, a tea that promote, promotes the journey to heaven. Note that the plant liana resembles a stair promoted the shaman's journey to the heaven. And Krao shamans uh, smoke psychodysleptic plants while he blooms and sucks the disease from the patient's body. 
Krao uh, shamans can uh, use marijuana or other plants which have the same effects of its, of this plant, or major effects or minor, uh, minor effects, but all of them are native to the Cerrado biome. Uh, only marijuana that uh, is not native from this biome. In the second moment, generally next morning after the beginning of the ritual, the shamans go to the patient's house and offer one medicine, one remedy, made of plants, animal or fungus. The shaman makes several visits to the patient during the day to observe how he reacts to the medicine. If the patient does not show improvement, the shaman waits until the next day to offer a stronger remedy for the disease in question. They never mix two plants in the therapeutic treatments because they believe that plants can interact with each other and causes some risk to the patient. On the other hand, the Kayagan people uh, associate two plants that they call partners, Kame and Kayurukre, to increase the effect of some medicines. We observe that the, their medicines are, are really different. Um, also, Krao knows about 138 plants for the central nervous system diseases, and they were classified by us in 14 categories. The category tonicus is the one uh, which the highest number of plants. The tonicus category is very important for Krao people because they utilize many plants as fortifiers daily in order to perform the running ritual, where the champion running status, status is highly valued. To do so, they carry logs, trunks from a palm tree for about two kilometers in a relay scheme until they reach the village. This woman, for example, is carrying a trunk that weighs between 30 and 40 kilos. But there are, there are other very interesting categories, such as analgesics and other with possible psychoactive effects, such anxiolytics, sleep disorders, and stimulants. Note they are, they are very, very um, um, specific to stop snoring, to sleep longer, to, have, uh, to sleep more slightly. Um, but in this traditional medicine, we also observe plants maintained for specific desires, for example, as abortifacients, temporary or definitive contraceptives, to separate corpus, to promote fertility, and so on. When we compare the categories most seated in that uh, review regarding the 26 indigenous people, uh, in, uh, living in Brazil and the ones observed among Krao people, we realize that there are some similarity between them. For example, the analgesic, stonic, fever and hallucinogens are the one with the highest number of plants, considering their geographic isolation from hospitals and any health system care, they really need powerful analgesics and tonics. And also the hallucinogens, which promotes the healing rituals. Many fever is related to, um, to the amount of tropical disease in their environments, Amazon, Cerrado, and so on. I am almost finishing. <laughs> okay. Well, finally, it's very important to keep in mind that this knowledge, this knowledge should not be seen as something to be validated by academy, academic science. First of all, because if they are known and used by these cultures, this is enough and must be respected. Secondly, pharmacology does not always have the tools to really measure and affirm whether or not a tradition of knowledge is true. A concrete example is the rat on this slide. Krao women tie uh, um, tree bark to their belly when they want to give birth to a male child and tie another tree bark when they want to have a female, a daughter. But how to measure this in laboratory, in hat laboratory? The fact that we do not have tools to measure this traditional knowledge doesn't 
not mean that it's a mere belief or that it should be disqualified by the academy. We have a lot to be, we have, we have a lot to be learned with the traditional technology. And really my last slide is, uh, where did these remedies ca uh, come from? When we consider that many remedies that we use today came really from plants and the traditional technology. So let's respect this technology. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, ma'am. It was really excellent. Next, our session is on the topic, uses of medicinal plants from the Ayurvedic perspective and of the native peoples and farmers of Argentina. For this, I would like to welcome Ms. Monica Cuerafo, ma'am. She's a biochemist and an epidemiologist.